on to Stan Holt, Stan Holt's Designs. I wanted to come on here to show you a quick tutorial on how to make some really beautiful um, Christmas ornaments. Um, this year I'm going farmhouse slash vintage. I'm trying to marry the two for my um, Christmas decor. So now let's get started. These are three inch round wooden um, ornament blanks. You get like a bag of 50 or 60. Um, again, this is an Amazon, and uh, yeah, they're three and uh, it's three inches wide by three and a half. From here to here is three and a half. From here to here is three. Um, they're wooden Christmas, so I will have to link those down below, and you can order those. Okay, so we're going to be working with this. Now, I also ordered some snowflake uh, molds, in which I did not have. Um, and I got all sorts of sizes and everything, and I have, you you know, casted them in resin, and it's UV resin, meaning that you will need a UV lamp, not a UV, um, flashlight or a UV single, you're going to need a full lamp, and I just use my UV nail lamp to cure the the uh, resin and the resin I used doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, where did I set it? Y'all y'all will not believe the chaos in this room. Uh, oh here we go. I used this one. Oop. This one right here. It's just basic UV resin clear and I will link um, a really good, affordable, affordable UV lamp in my links, as well as a link to this one. There you go. Um, as I see here, I casted some um, the pretty big ones. Can you see it on the black better? Yeah. See how pretty they are. So these are beautiful. But my main focus was doing the little pieces. Now these are sanded and um, I sanded them and everything and they are ready to use. You want to sand the um, your snowflakes so that because if you're going to use acrylic I mean um, yeah well resin um, you're going to need a coarse surface because you, we all know resin does smooth. So um, if you cast them in like a plaster or um, something that's porous um, I would still definitely be doing a gesso coat anyway now you wouldn't have to sand it down or prime it you would just can go right straight into painting if it's a porous but if it's a smooth surface like this you're gonna have to create a gripping foundation okay so I did various sizes as you see here and I casted those and I come up with some beautiful concepts. Another one I have a little bit left of. It's the same thing, UV resin part. It, look, y'all, it's just in difference in size. That's it. That's it. That's all. I promise. Okay, so I'm going to cast some little ones, and this is how I do it. trying to get back into the groove of things you know when you've been gone so long oh my word so y'all gonna have to apologize because I haven't done crafting like hardcore like this in at least three years okay you want to make sure you get them in all of those little fancy grooves. So I'm just taking the nozzle and working those in there like that. Okay. You know, you're just going to want to make sure. And I'm not worried about bubbles. I just want to make sure that it's in every little crevice here. Looks good to me. So now I'm just gonna stick them under the light here and get. Let me wiggle the 
I'm telling you, this was going out on me. There we go. I'm doing it at the highest power um, for three. I'm going to do, I do it on the little ones. I do two rounds of 60 seconds. That is what I do. Um, just please read your instructions on the back of the bottle. It will explain to you how long you need the cure for and stuff of that nature. So, But I'll list all of these different resins and you can pick and choose which one you would like. They're all the same. Now I will tell you this. If you use resin and squirt this big, this much resin into a mold, it's going to let off a very um, nose burning smell. So please wear a mask if you're going to do it in large scales like this. Honestly, I would assume just you use these with regular resin and not the UV resin. You know, the resin that takes a good 24 hours to cure. Yeah, I, or do quick resin like by that Aline's um, quick Aline's quick resin. I'm, I've got a. I will put that down below. Note also, UV resin gets hot. So when you pull it straight out from under the lamp, it's going to be warm. It's not going to be like a uh, burning, like you're going to hurt yourself, but it's going to be warm. So don't be alarmed. That's just the chemical process of it. And that's what hence UV. Just a, it, it, if you like fast for small stuff like I just showed you, UV resin. If you want larger pieces like this, use the quick cast or regular resin. Look at that. See how fast that was? I was talking more than actually the, probably the time it took to make them. Um, see, look. There we go. Oh, these little beauty baby ones. So now, let's get you an emery board and sand it. I'm going to do it on both sides. And this will also show you imperfections as well. Like, if you can't see it with the clear naked eye, I feel like you can see where I need to clean this up a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all you do is you sand it. Like, now see, one of these little snowflakes are gone, but that gives it character. I don't care. Um, we love her. We love her very much. Don't hate. So once you get all these sanded up and, the, and you want to use the ones you want, that's when you pop back out your wooden ornament and you're going to paint it with some gesso. So I'm going to paint it with some gesso and then I will come back with further commentary. Okay, so... I got done painting and I went ahead and um, I went ahead and uh, painted it in my favorite color of the home decor folk art collection. It's called sheepskin. This color is so pretty. It's like it's not white, but it's not cream. It's just perfect. Ah, that's me. And then what I did was is I did the the, um, the gesso, which you can see the difference there. Hopefully, I did the gesso. Then I painted on some crackle medium that I had. Thank God it was still good. Um, crackle medium, and I put it on, and then I put the sheepskin on, and it gave it that crackle effect, which is going to come in handy when. Um, I start painting and distressing it. So now what I'm doing is I'm picking out my snowflakes and I am giving them a light sand and this not only grips paint but it will also grip um, the glue so you definitely want that. I'm gonna put one of these big ones on here. Then here we're gonna. And I would do this with the fast cast resin and also um, your 
if you use polymer clay, air dry clay, I would still sand it because you need that porous um, texture. You need that. So. This is for the video purposes, but I uh, meant to meant, meant to say, um, you are welcome to use hot glue, but if you want these to last for years and not be damaged by the heat of your attic or wherever you store your stuff, E6000 these pieces on, okay? Trust me, you'll appreciate it later. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish gluing um, these snowflakes on and then I'm going to jump right into the distressing and painting part. snowflake and then um, as you can tell I just simply use the um, chalk paint um, sheepskin and then I went in with a little bit of gray and I use from the same collection the chateau or the castle it's called castle and then I went in with just a basic um, chocolate brown it's light cinnamon by deco art and uh, so there you go and then I'm going to use this gilding let's see this uh, metal wax and old silver out of my stash and then I'm just going to brush the high points The way I'm going to hang these is I create a knot like so and then I take the tail that's left and I'm simply just wrapping it around the top there so you just want to bring it on around and you want a hot glue you will need your hot glue gun for some of this like if you wanted to add decoration greenery or whatever and you didn't want to wait for the curing of like E6000 alright then you're going to snip off Excess there, and that leaves you 
with the perfect thing. Okay, so like I told you, I made several. And these are a little bit darker than this one. Because these, I wanted a little more chocolate. As you can tell, you can go really gray with the silver and bling. Or you can go very light. It's up to you. So I made this one with the, and you know me, I gotta add bling. Sorry. I made that one. And then I made this one and I put our old Christmas ornament that I had hanging up for years. Um, and these are broken pieces from resin um, that I did. I did this one. I did this one with a touch of bling and of course another. I didn't put tassels on all of them. Okay, I did this one. Then I did this one. Not pretty. Then I did this one. And then these two, this one is one without bling. If you like it without the bling, you don't have to put the bling. And this is a metal piece that I had in my stash. It's brass or it's like a, a metal stamping I had in my, my stash. And then I wanted to play around with a photo. And this, I'm... I thought this would be pretty in an album or on, on an album because it doesn't really look like an ornament anymore. So you don't have to necessarily use these as they're intended. This is a demonstration to show you that with a little bit of metal or a decor, it looks like a it looks like a picture that you can put in an album or something. Super cute. Blah blah blah. So there you go. And Last but not least, I got the inspiration from Pinterest. Let me pull it up. I was having extreme difficulty trying to find the original person. So here's the photo. And when I click it, it just gives me more like this and stuff and see like uploaded by Cheryl and then the one I got inspiration from says uploaded by Ellen Davis so this is something that's uh, circulating around Pinterest I would just look up um, like vintage Christmas ornaments or snowflake ornaments maybe and I got the inspiration from this now these are much bigger than these these look to be about your four inch or four and a half inches because um, the snowflakes look bigger on these so and you can you know I just chose the three so but yeah um, I'm gonna get these going and uh, show you how I'm gonna style them so stay tuned for project number two y'all really gonna love it it's really simple to make and so fun and so versatile in your you know christmas decor so see you next time